Salutations, respective viewers. I am George from Ireland, and here I am outside the Marx Memorial Library in London. So you shall see it behind me. Now, this edifice dates to uh, 1737. Originally, it was a school, and later it was sold off, used for other purposes, um, a coffee house, various workshops. Um, and then in um, the mid 19th century, uh, it became a um, printing press and a coffee house, and it was a meeting place for various radicali from the United Kingdom and uh, other nations. So it's very likely that Dr. Marx, when he was here in London, um, gave two of his famous lectures here, one of which uh, prefigured um, volume one of Das Kapital and um, addressed the International Working Men's Association, which is also known as the First International. I know you say, men's? Oh, that's terribly sexist. But in those days, um, even socialists usually excluded women um, from full parity. Um, so anyway, later on, it was the um, headquarters of the 20th century press in the 19th century. Yes, despite being the 19th century, it's called the 20th century press, which was um, the publishing company for uh, just about every revolutionary publication that was printed in this country. And this country had a very um, broad degree of uh, freedom of expression even at that time, more so than perhaps any other European country. Um, and so these things were printed not only in English, but in Russian and various other languages. Now, Vladimir Ilyich Lenin, when he was in London before the First World War, lived uh, not far away, perhaps a mile away, that away to the west um, in King's Cross. And um, he um, was here where he edited 13 copies of Iskra, meaning spark, as in it would spark off the revolution. It was a monthly journal and it was smuggled on ships sailing to Russia and taken into Russia as contraband in order to disseminate revolutionary Nostra. But later he moved off to Zurich to be that bit closer Russia in the event of a revolution. And of course, it's easier to smuggle things over land than it is um, onto a ship and off a ship. Uh, right, so that's the Marx Memorial Library at Clark and Well Green. And um, since then, it's been uh, owned by a trust and is really the, the nexus of socialist thought and activity in the British capital. Uh, what else can I point out? So yeah, various radical publications were, were published there. Um, so if you go inside, you'll see the donations given by various trades unions, memorial plaques to luminaries of the socialist and communist world, including some American communists who were persecuted in their homeland and the McCarthyite era, who came here where things were friendlier and less judgmental. Um, Karl Marx's daughter, um, she worked there for her short life. Uh, she was also involved in the, in the communist cause. What else can I say? Ah, in 1933, British and German socialists and communists had a meeting here to discuss what they ought to do to mark the uh, half century anniversary of Karl Marx's death. And they decided that a library would be a most apposite, lasting means of memorializing Marx. So they named this the Marx Memorial Library. And since then, it has been a jumping off point for many a um, left wing protest march. So it's open to the public on Tuesday and Thursday at one o'clock for a guided tour, five pounds if you're waged, three pounds if you're unwaged. So that's the Marx Memorial Library here on Clerkenwell Green. I know it's spelled Clerkenwell, but it's pronounced Clerkenwell. Don't know where the original well of Clerkenwell was. Remember when I first came here two years ago, trying to find the site of the Clerkenwell explosion, that prison which doesn't exist anymore, but I couldn't quite locate it. All right, so that's enough from outside the Marx Memorial Library, which is a socialist must see if you're inquisitive about things of that nature.